presentation, we'll look at the UAS demand for non-US end users for defense and security applications. And we'll give high-level overviews of country demand and the resulting supply requirements. It will look over the next 10 years and bring out some of the key trends impacting the global industry. Here we have the IHS Jane's global forecast for UAV platforms. It includes sales from research and development, production and support and services for platforms and their associated airborne systems. It shows snapshots in 2010, 2015, and 10 years into the future. This shows the resilience of the UAV market, which despite constrained defense budgets, has grown overall in the last five years. Unmanned aerial vehicles are viewed by most militaries as having growing significance in future operations, and our forecast projects that by 2024, the market will almost double. The drawdown of operations in Iraq and Afghanistan has reduced the U.S. end-user market, which is seen stabilizing by 2016. However, the growth in non-U.S. demand, notably the contributions of China and the Russian Federation, is driving growth in the total UAV market, which is forecast to expand at 6% compound growth from 2016 over the decade. There are some interesting trends with regard to their operations. For non-U.S. sales over the last five years, the largest demand has occurred in the tactical, close-in operating environment. This level of demand is seen to continue into the future. But what we have seen is an increasing demand for male types and nations using UAVs in a more strategic role and a surge in male and hail demand. This clearly opens up a lot of opportunities for suppliers of these types, and Northrop Grumman and General Atomics have the ability to capitalize on this growth to augment their U.S. sales. However, the future market will be more competitively fought. This chart shows the non-U.S. business that's been secured to date. It includes contracted and follow-on business. You can see Northrop Grumman has a large share of this from its Global Hawk sales for NATO AGS, Japan, South Korea, and commitment by Australia to buy Triton. It's noteworthy that these recent contracts have pushed the U.S. back to number one leading exporter. As for the previous two years, Israel had moved into lead export position with a series of wins by Israel Aerospace and Elbit Systems. But now let's look at the opportunities. This shows a healthy growth in opportunities, roughly equivalent to that already secured over the 10 years. There is a spread of potential across all UAV weight classes, and Europe, Asia, Oceania, and the Middle East each offer considerable potential. More nations will be using UAVs in a strategic role, and there will be a surge in mail and hail demand. Many of the larger nations are growing their indigenous capabilities, and programs from this investment may begin to compete more and more as we move into the next decade. It is possible that we will see much greater teaming between existing leaders and these rising stars. Interim mail requirements in all these regions will offer further potential for REPA, and these sales may be assisted by the new U.S. export regulations. In Europe, a new generation mail program planned to enter service by 2025 will reduce U.S. influence in this market in the longer term. Overall, the picture is one of optimism with potential for all. Integration and networking is becoming increasingly important with future operations involving closer working of manned and unmanned assets. In turn, there are growing examples of integration between unmanned systems themselves. DARPA identifies a need for an unmanned submersible mothership to deploy UAVs and UUVs. Remotech and Aerobot are working to integrate Remotech's unmanned ground vehicles and Aerobot's aerial systems to form new ground air capabilities to meet a wide range of operational requirements. The Pentagon has a vision for developing an integrated network force of unmanned vehicles air, land, and sea over the next 25 years. 
a new U.S. Navy office for unmanned systems is being added. So all aspects of unmanned in all domains, over, on, and under the sea, and coming from the sea to operate on land, will be coordinated and championed. Outside the U.S., other nations are recognizing the need for greater integration. For example, Israel has started to look at this. Over time, one could foresee greater integration also in commercial unmanned air, land, and sea systems. The future holds immense opportunities for integrated unmanned systems. In conclusion, growing global tension and the foreseen increased role of UAVs in future operations will stimulate non-US end-user demand and drive the total UAV market to double in 10 years. China and the Russian Federation are significant growth areas, but offer limited business potential for Western suppliers. However, there are many prospects with other nations, with many contracts already secured by the leaders Northrop Grumman, Israel Aerospace, Albert Systems, General Atomics, and there is scope to double the business secured over the next 10 years, with scope also for other suppliers to grow their share and position in the market. Many political and funding challenges will arise for pan-European UCAV and mail solutions, and these seem logical paths forward to make efficient use of development resources. But are there too many nations involved for the size of programs envisaged? Joint ventures, teaming, acquisitions will play an increasingly important part in the future, with more industry consolidation likely. Future operations will become more integrated between manned and unmanned assets and also between unmanned air, land, and sea-based assets themselves. Overall, the future international UAS market is onwards and upwards, but the future is way more complex. 